Uh, this is going to be a busy and consequential work period for the Senate. We're going to consider landmark legislation to establish paycheck fairness, legislation to boost American innovation and competition in the 21st century, and legislation to protect voting rights in American democracy in the final week of June. In addition to these three important issues... Joe Biden does not have a deadline for an infrastructure deal. And the White House even said that he is willing to drop his corporate tax hike in exchange for getting a deal done sooner. What are your thoughts on this, everybody? Well, President Biden sent out a fourth stimulus check this year. Tell me your thoughts on this in the comments below. Basically, if you look at the infrastructure and all that into it, they're looking at something. There's a jobs portion of that, and there's just traditional infrastructure. So if they're going to split that apart, and they've talked about doing that too. I haven't gotten intricately into that with the White House yet, and I'm glad that Shelley's doing, and she's doing a great job out there trying to find that sweet spot, if you will. So she'll report back. She's part of our G20 group, 10 Democrats, 10 Republicans. She'll report back next week. We'll see where she is on this and what we can do to assist and help get it over the line. It needs to be done. We need to do something in a bipartisan way. We can't continue on these types of projects because we were able to bring everything to fruition working through a bipartisan Now everybody, White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki said that Biden intends to continue negotiations next week with Republicans, led by Senator Shelley Moore Capito and said the White House is open to a wide range of potential ways to pay for a bill as Republicans balk at tax hikes. At her daily press briefing, Jen Psaki said, we're going to keep our options open to see what paths we can move forward on. The Washington Post reported Thursday that President Biden told Senator Capito during their meeting at the White House that he might be willing to take his proposed 21% to 28% corporate tax hike off the table. Now this would undo the tax cuts pushed for by the former president and adopted by the GOP back in, 20, back in 2017, but it's also considered a non-star by Republicans. In exchange, folks, Biden will seek the tax hike later, outside of the infrastructure package, and settle for a new minimum corporate tax rate of 15% on global income, and that's to target corporations that pay little to nothing to the federal government annually. Jen Psaki twice confirmed that Biden does not have a deadline for an infrastructure deal before deciding that Democrats should attempt to ramp their bill without any Republican votes. Yesterday, I recommended to the president that two of the top voting rights lawyers in the country, um, uh, Myra Perez for the Second Circuit and Mr. Ho from the, the chief voting rights lawyer of the ACLU. She's the chief voting rights in the Brennan Center. He's the chief in the ACLU. So it's a much more diverse and I think far more qualified than the narrow right-wing people who Trump continued to pick. And, as Senator Durbin will tell you, we're going to be able to restore a lot of the balance to the courts because there's a whole lot of vacancies that we are going to fill. Later today, we're going to finish the U.S. Innovation and Competition Act, and uh, the Senate's busy. That's one of the most major and significant pieces of legislation we've passed in a long time, which is going to have a huge effect on the future of the American economy and American jobs. It's the largest investment in scientific research and technological innovation in generations. It sets the United States to, on a path to lead the world in the industries of the future. I look forward to working with Speaker Pelosi and the committees in both chambers to get this on the President's desk. After that vote, we'll have the first procedural vote on the Paycheck Fairness Act, which Senator Murray has been spearheading. In my view, uh, this straightforward, unobjectionable piece of legislation should merit bipartisan support. All 50 Democrats are co-sponsors, all 50. Right now in America, women earn about 82 cents for every dollar a man makes.